What's up guys, welcome to this episode of Beers and Breakdowns. In this episode, we're doing a pretty dope movie called Fury. I loved it. I like Damn, it. I love this movie. It's amazing It's movie. so good. I think in my not knowing shit about opinion, it's one of Brad Pitt's best performances. Yeah, also I think it's, LaBeouf's. Also LaBeouf's. I found out from this movie that I like to watch Shia LaBeouf cry. <laughs> Kind of makes me happy. Who doesn't? I don't, I don't know what it is about Shy crying. <laughs> he cries like 50 times in this movie, and none of it makes me sad. It's just like, yeah, cry, you. <laughs> I like it. I like it. It's dark. <laughs> I like every time he tears up. It just makes me happy in some dark, recessed place in my existence. It's an interesting way to look at it. Yeah. How did you feel about him crying? I was indifferent. Indifferent? Oh, I mean, he's it's a scene. I liked it. I wasn't like, I like this. Yeah. I was, I was like, like, this is amazing. No, I didn't rub my nipples, but I was like, cry, cry a little. <laughs> like, yeah, shit. Did seriously. you finger your belly button? No. I'm not against that, though. You don't know how to watch movies. So, in this movie, we're going to watch this movie. Let's jump in. Also, guys, before we do, just know that we are taking care of you. If you want to get selected for special operations and you're trying to go down that route, just know that we're doing everything in our power to help you out. From videos, from our online mentorship program, where you can get one-on-one -on -one coaching, you can get group coaching, uh, to the products that we're developing with the Ruck Trainer. We have an AR670-1 approved boot. Um, that's in the works. We're waiting on samples now. Uh, we have the same factory in Mexico that does Timberlands making our boots. So we know they're going to be phenomenal quality and they're going to be bad. Ass. Um, so, so many things in the works that we're doing for you guys to help you get selected. Make sure you check out the FNGacademy.com. Um, if you're trying to go that route, sign up for uh, the mentor program. If you're a civilian that just wants to use special operations mindset to further advance your goals, you could also sign up as well. You don't have to be going. Uh, special operations. We're helping a lot of people just achieve their goals. Like Abel trying to achieve any resemblance of a bicep whatsoever. Eight weeks. That's home. Do as you told. Don't get too close to anyone. Oof. That was it. Just Brad Pitt telling you, as a new guy, don't get close to anyone. That's terrifying. Like, that's probably the last thing you ever want to hear going to a unit <laughs> ever. people are going to die. Is don't get close to anyone. That's like, hey, people are dying left and right. Mm -hmm. So don't make friends because you're going to lose them. And then that happened. Did you ever get a speech like that before you went off? No, dude, I don't want a speech like that. Don't get close to anyone. I was like, well, I'd imagine it's not in your control. Like, did you ever meet anybody, like, when you were going to go that would give you some chilling advice? Uh, the, the best advice I got, and it wasn't chilling, it was just it was just real, was the... Um, What's up, guys? This video is sponsored by 18 Alpha Fitness. If you haven't checked it out, and if you want to go special operations, you need a good fitness plan. Go check out Kevin over at 18 Alpha Fitness. He's a former Green Beret. He knows what he's doing. His post job from the military, from Special Forces, was helping uh, Air Force Special Operations get physically fit. This guy is on point, and he's a great dude. He can do custom plans and uh, just a common plan that I use, which is awesome, the kettlebell program. But I highly recommend you get a custom plan. Use code word BUCK, and he'll hook you up. Civilian that was in some three-letter agency that mm -hmm. was shooting the 320s. Remember I told that story? Mm -hmm. So there's this. So, so we're we're in Afghanistan. I told this story before, but we're in Afghanistan, and there's this guy there with long hair, three letter agency. He used to be special forces. Now who knows what he does? CIA, something along those lines. Orange, I don't know. So he's in one of those units. Well, he's got like we're in combat, and he's got like no kit on, and he doesn't have a weapon system at all. He doesn't have an AR, M4, nothing. The, the only thing he has, so he does have a weapon system, but the only thing he has is a 320 grenade launcher. Hmm. Well, I also had a 320 grenade launcher, and I had 320 grenade uh, rounds around my entire waist. Well, guess what he doesn't have? Grenades. Hmm. And he's wearing a slick vest. The only thing he has on is this, like, super thin, old piece of shit slick vest with, like, it. you can't attach any equipment to it. It's just nothing on it. Mm -hmm. And it's probably rated for like nine millimeter. Mm. So basically it's 
it's bullshit. Right. This guy is just a straight up fucking cowboy. Like I've never seen a cowboy in Afghanistan before until I met this dude. And so hair down to his shoulders, backwards hat. And at one point we're getting in a gunfight and we're shooting at these dudes. And he looks at me, he's like, hey man, could I get one of those grenades? <laughs> Cause I had all the grenades. I was like, uh, yeah, you don't have any? Like what the fuck was your plan, dude? So I pulled out a grenade and I handed it to him and he pops it in. And then I go to start shooting again. I look over at him. He's like, tunk. <laughs> and he looks at me and goes, hey, man. <laughs> I was like, this fucking guy. <laughs> and he goes, can I get another one? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And I pulled another one out and I handed it to him. He goes, thanks, dude. <laughs> and he loads it up and he goes, tunk. <laughs> and he, <laughs> I was like. Is this a fucking movie? Like, yeah. is this really happening? And he asked me a third time. You wouldn't think it would take three times, but he asked me a third time. I just kept feeding this dude grenades, all my grenades, because he just wanted to sit there and dunk, dunk. And I actually have a picture on my Instagram, and I'll send it to you. We'll get put it in there, uh-huh. of him laying in the prone shooting the 320s. Uh-huh. So one of the commandos took a picture of him because it's just so fucking bizarre. Oh, okay. And uh, so anyway, so one of the, the advice that he gave me, because at one point he was pulling me up a, uh, a wall and my 320 scraped on oh, the side right, and it went yeah. off. <clears throat> and so at the end of the day, I found him and was like, hey, brother, like, I can't believe that happened. Like, I feel like such a piece of shit. And he was like, dude, this is war. He's like, stupid shit's going to happen. He's like, I fragged my own guys before. He's like, I've almost shot my own dudes. I've almost been shot by my own guys. He's like, if you're going to play war... You got to accept the, the, the fucking game. You know, mm-hmm. it's just like, this is how we do it. It's stupid shit's going to happen. And I was new to direct action. You know, that was like one of my first, like really getting into ticks, uh, troops in contact. And I couldn't, he couldn't have been more right. Mm-hmm. Like what he said was basically a Brad Pitt moment for me. Right. And from that point on, it was just like every time stupid shit would happen, like fucking one of the guys getting shot in the head and then jumping back up yeah. and surviving it, you're like, there's one of the stupid things. Uh, team sergeant gets pissed off, goes and tries to clear a room with a grenade and forgets to pull the pin and throws it in there. So we're like, it didn't go off. So now EOD, Travis is like, what the fuck, dude? Yeah. Like, now do I have to I have to go clear that bitch to see if you pulled the pin? Did you pull the pin? Like, is it a dud? Or did it just, did you not pull the pin? And so now, like, all movement stops because he just made a stupid ass decision to throw a grenade in a room for no reason. So things, and then the Delta throwing a grenade over a wall hits a tree, comes back on our side. And then the shrapnel hits one of our guys. Mm. Not a big deal. It was just a little shrapnel on his leg. It wasn't anything big, but that's the video, right? What's that? That's the one you have video of. I have, that's not the one that I posted. That's, I have video of that one, but that's, I didn't post that one. Um, but yeah, so it just it just kept happening, and they, like that was my, you know, Brad Pitt advice. It was like, holy shit, that guy's so right. Like war is fucking. Sometimes you're Johnny on the spot, mm-hmm. and then sometimes you're just like, how dumb can we be? <laughs> like, are we fucking all idiots here? Yeah. It's just stupid shit happens when everything is escalated to that high level. Mm-hmm. You just can't operate a hundred percent effectively all the time at that level. It's just not going to happen. That was gnarly. Yeah, that's half of somebody's face. Yeah, so first deployment we had at the med station Aircraft is coming in, so I wasn't SF yet, so I, I just wanted to get in as much action as I could. Mm-hmm. So every time a bird would come in, I would go help the medics. And because I was the Sergeant Major's PSD, personal security attachment, no one said anything to me. They're just like, oh, I was showing, like, he's in and out. Because I was with the Sergeant Major all the time, mm-hmm. I was in and out of everywhere. So everyone kind of got familiar with me, so I could just show up. So I would just show up to help every time a medevac would come in. Well, a medevac came in with green berets on it, and there was like a... Before they got to the uh, surgical tent, mm-hmm. there was a like a pre-tent, and they would put them in there, cut the clothes off, and like prep them for the surgery tent. 
And so one of the Green Berets was in, and he had he was shot up like big time, bunch of holes in him. And they're doing CPR on him, and every time they pump, blood is shooting out of the holes out of mm. his back. And so in this like pre tent where they're trying to get his clothes cut off while they're pumping him, it's just f- pooling with blood. And so I'll never forget the E7 uh, medic who ended up marrying my buddy. She was like, hey, private, talking to someone else. She was like, hey, private, clean this fucking blood up. And then so they rushed him into the surgical team. It was just pool of blood. And I, I'll never forget looking at that private. And he's sitting in the blood. And he just, he had one of those moments where he was just like, like clicked out. Mm-hmm. And he's just smearing the blood all over the floor. Like it's, the rag was completely soaked up. And he's just smearing it in a circle. And he's, I looked at him. I was like, hey, dude, are you all right? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> and then just keep, goes back to smearing the, the blood. And I was like, okay, this kid's f***ed up. And so it's, it's kind of crazy to see like what it takes to get mm-hmm. somebody into that. Some people don't get there. Some people just don't get there. They'll always function. They'll always be able to think. No matter how gruesome it gets, they'll just work through it. But some people just stop in that moment and they're like, this isn't something they ever wanted to see. Right. They didn't mean to see it. And now that they're in it, they regret it. And it just freezes them. It's, it's a trip. Any questions? I got one question. Peterson. I'm Binkowski, sir. Ah, you start shaving your face. <laughs> so people ask me all the time like what it takes to be a good officer uh-huh. and that scene was like the perfect description of what not to do it's like this officer comes in he's clearly baby faced he got orders from hire to you know this is the movement operation this is what we're going to do and he comes in and he tells his combat seasoned veterans mm-hmm. what they're going to do and they're like okay buddy <laughs> and it's like yes you're in charge but you're looking at four guys. I think there's four there. You're looking at four guys who have been in. The, they know the the enemy. They know the terrain. They know their capabilities. They know mm-hmm. everything. They have all the experience. And your pimply ass, brand new face is coming in, and you have a decision to make. So when you ask me what does it take to be a good officer in the army, just know that when you're faced with that decision as to whether or not you're going to go your the ego route and I'm the boss and I'm the man and you're going to do as I say, or you're going to go, you guys have the experience. You know more than me. Help me. What do you think? What do you think is the best idea? Hmm. Not once did he ask any of those fucking NCOs what they thought about the plan. Mm -hmm. Maybe there was nothing that could be done about the plan because it came from higher, but still having their input could have influenced your, your movements, your tactics, your mental preparation, mm-hmm. your equipment preparation. It, a good officer is always going to look to their NCOs for guidance because mm-hmm. they know they have the experience. So that was just a perfect example of what not to do as an officer. And there's a lot of officers that will do this because they've been brought up in like this West Point ring knocker douchebag mentality mm-hmm. to where it's like, you're better than everyone else. And you have to let them know that by acting like a snobby c- and in reality, it's like you could be a private with no education and shit for experience, mm-hmm. but just have grown up in a way that just you, you have street smarts, you have common sense, you have, you know, the ability to look at a situation and say, this is a good tactical decision. This is the smart thing to do and way out fucking perform this right. West Pointer, you know, so it's like you always have to base it on the individual. I just thought that was an awesome scene that just perfectly like portrayed an officer going the wrong way, which happens all the time. Over here, Gordo. Baker Company? Yes, sir. I'm not a sir. Me neither. Where's your boss? Dead. Who's in charge of this column? I am. Yeah, I'm talking to the right man. Park it over there. Old man's waiting. I just thought that was funny to show like the 
him sitting in the 50 cal mm -hmm. shooting off rounds like what do you think he's doing with that i have no idea like practicing target practice i mean are they actively fighting against somebody right there but they're just parking right they're all just kind of nope. hanging out yeah they're not fighting him against anybody. he's just shooting it to shoot it mm -hmm. and they just waste ammo like that so depending on where the how close the enemy is positioned or where they think the enemy might be mm -hmm. it could be like hugely beneficial to just be sending rounds out oh okay so like that guy's sitting there he's got it angled pretty much all the way up mm -hmm. and he's just doot 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 he'll probably do a shift doot 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 you're just getting people rounds dropping so let's say hypothetical you have an element moving in on your position mm -hmm. to try and do uh, an ambush on you and they're you know being syrup delicious <laughs> and moving <laughs> and they're moving like quietly uh -huh. to try and get as close as they can before they initiate their ambush now all of a sudden they have you shooting that 50 cal and it even lands anywhere near them and they think that you're onto them mm -hmm. now they open up and then you've essentially started the ambush way sooner than they wanted to right so instead of being right on top of you maybe they're back here so keeping heads down um making them think that you're on to them making them afraid to come in your uh max effective range of your 50 cal so i'll come in your max effective range <laughs> nah so there's just it's crazy like most people would look at that and be like what is that guy doing yeah, I just, I mean, I, I could, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even think twice about it. I would assume he's shooting, maybe he's testing as well. I mean, I wouldn't even care. Like, yeah. when I'm watching the movie, I'm not worried about why he's doing it. I'm just assuming there's noise, it's a mm. war zone, it's, a, it's, an, it's like a part of the scene. So I wouldn't even ask the question. But, but if you narrowed it down, I would have no idea. I'd be like, I don't know, is he shooting at someone? Is he target practice? I mean, yeah, no, likely just suppressive fire. Mm. Just to have bullets landing out there to let people know, like, if you come near us, we're, we how, can't hit you. How different are the tanks now than they used to be? Like in this I movie. have no fucking idea. No, you guys weren't. I've never worked with tanks. Never fuck with tanks. Mm. Tank. I, I imagine that there's some huge upgrades to the tanks. That sounds fun. <laughs> I want to fuck with the tank. It sounds. I would never want to be in the tank. I think Whistling Diesel got a tank, didn't he? I don't know. I think he got a tank. I would never want to be in a tank. Not in a war zone. Yeah. To me, that's a steel coffin. This high ground. You got any eyes on it? I had eyes there. Gone there. Gone. Flying blind. You and me. Ground's got sights on this road. I don't want to show my flank. Any objections if I come in here? You're right on a fucking magic carpet for all I care. I know you are. I know you know what you're doing. You just paced them hard for me. They murdered some good boys out there today. All right, puzzle. What if they just quit? So this scene I thought was pretty cool because it just shows why special forces do land navigation. Mm -hmm. So everyone's afraid of land nav. It sucks. But this shows the importance of land nav. When you get out there and you have to make real tactical decisions based on a, a fucking map and terrain and terrain association, it's so important to be able to read a map so you could evaluate. Like you have the enemy is using that same terrain. Mm -hmm. You're using the same terrain. The winner is going to be the one that could make the best tactical decisions based on the terrain, your equipment, you know, everything that you have available, your skill set, um, your resources. So it's just cool that they're like, what do you think about this road? And what do you think about that? What about this high ground? Did you have eyes here? They're absolutely using the map to analyze the terrain and see the best tactical locations to make, you know, the best decisions possible. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know how to read a map because you've never studied land nav, you've never tried, you never got lost, then you're going to have a hard time doing that in combat when it comes time to making a good decision. So what are you going to do? What most people do when they fail land nav is, is like, we'll take our shortest point from straight, you know, point A to point B and just go straight there. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you could be putting yourself in the worst position possible and get everybody killed. Mm -hmm. So it's so important to be able to read a map. I used to use the Thomas guides. Remember those? Yeah, the Tom Tom. No, a Thomas guide. What is that? <laughs> this is no, not Tom Tom. Tom Tom was like the first iteration of GPS. Yeah. Where it was like a GPS by itself in a box, right? Yeah. No, before that was a Thomas guide. Comment down below if you guys remember the Thomas guide. I don't know. So I yeah, so my dad used to do um, pest control. And I used to go with him. So he I used to have to navigate for him. So obviously this was way before cell phones having GPSs or even GPSs being affordable. What year was that? Fuck, I was probably like 15 years old. I'm 38 now, so better at math than I am. Over 20 years ago. So it's 
I was just curious because when we did Battle LA, they're like, I was like, use GPS. It was 2010 when that movie came out. And people were like, I didn't have GPS in 2010. Like, yes, they fucking yeah, did. Yeah, they had GPS. They just, it wasn't like, I don't, I don't remember if in 2010 it was ingrained in everybody's phone. But um, I know in like 2001, 2002 it wasn't. So I don't know. Now it's just so readily available. It's hard to remember when it yeah. wasn't. But we used to use Thomas Guide. So Thomas Guide is just basically a big book. And it's got, it's like, you figured it'd be as straightforward as like one page, two page, three page, but it's not. Like, so you have to look up the street that you're going to try to find, and then that will say D1, and you have to go and look for this one page. Now, the continuation of that page is somewhere else in this book, and you have to, like, depending on which direction you want to go, you correspond those letters with that next page that you have to find. It sounds like a fucking nightmare. It's a nightmare, yeah. And then I, I went to work for a company called Ashley Furniture, which is pretty big in California. I don't know if they're big anywhere else, but I had to do the same thing. Like when I was younger, like some of them had like had been at it so long, they like these guys saved up and bought these Mexicans bought GPSs and they had Tom Toms in there and Garmin's, but I had to use the Thomas guide. So like we would go, there'd be three of us to a truck, and then I would have to like navigate and figure out where we're going, tell them left, right, and it's all based on a map with colored lines and letters and numbers and. Dude, most people these days would get so fucking lost if you handed them a map. Yeah, I don't remember They'd how to like use north it. North or north south. So mm -hmm. it's this way, it's this way. And I'd imagine the way that book works is practical, I guess, but when you're using it, you're like, this is fucked. Like, you have to make quick decisions. Like, if you run out of road, you have to find out where that road keeps going in this book and then have to go find the corresponding page uh, to figure that out. It's terrible. Sucked. Yeah. It's hard enough to look at a whole map on one sheet. Yeah, you, they would test the guys out. So when you started working there, they'd test you out and be like, all right, so here you go. They would put you under pressure. They'd be like, we have to go here. And they would make sure that he doesn't ask for a turn until he knows it's going to run out. And he'd be like, hey, man, I, I don't know where I'm going now. Am I making a left? Am I making a right? Am I going straight? You got to figure it out. These guys choke up. I choked up. I was like, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, dude, that reminds me of being a rookie <laughs> patrol. Then they were like, they'd be like, where are we going? I'd be like, to the street. And they're like, where is it? And you're trying to do, you're trying to remember all the, tricks you told yourself is uh -huh. like alphabetical and what the names were of the streets and you're like i don't fucking know where i'm going go left and they're like no and you're like all right we'll go right I'm fucking like it's probably bad right that probably cut out a lot of good training for certain people because it's good to know yeah. it's a good fundamental thing to be able to think on your feet like well, i remember hearing it's that good to put people under pressure i remember hearing chp would um as part of their training program before you were actually out there like you they would make you respond to places in la whatever zone you you worked in. And I heard this from a CHP officer. He's like, they would essentially leave you there and then they would call you out of nowhere and try to get you to a certain point in LA in 10 minutes. And he's like, you have to figure it out on your own because they didn't have GPS at the time. Mm -hmm. So it's was like, they had to like drive and go and get you to know the area real well. So where now, it wouldn't be a, a viable tactic to train someone because they could just put it in their phone and be like, doop, I'll be there shortest time possible. Yeah, being a cop was, it's still hard though because you can't, you don't want to be using GPS I got caught on the radio a couple times to where, to where it was like, they'd be calling me. They're like, uh, some of the Baker, I forgot what my call sign was, 40, 43 Baker or something. And so they'd be like, 43 Baker. And I'd be like, and I would have the GPS on because I don't know where the fuck I'm at. And I'm trying to find this place in downtown, which is not my area. And so they, I would be like, go for 43 Baker. And they'd be like, turn right here. And I, <laughs> I was like, fuck, shut up, phone, damn it. <laughs> and then my buddies later would be like, dude, we heard your GPS going off, you dickhead. <laughs> I was like, fuck. I hate that thing making noise. I always so just embarrassing, follow the dude. line. Watch your fucking space. You got our left stick now. All right, let's hold up. If I say hold back, hold back, hold back. Left stick, left stick. What the fuck? Who can we on the right? All right, pause it. In the Bravo course, we did a same, a similar maneuver with the uh, Humvees. Mm -hmm. So there was an objective and had a road that was like an L. Mm -hmm. It's like an upside down L. And the objective was at the pinnacle of that L. Um, and one of, uh, one of the guys was like, well, let's just take the road and then we'll do, we'll stop right on the target and then initiate the ambush on the house, jump back in the vehicles and go. It's like the obvious choice, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but then looking at it, we the team came over like, ah, it's too easy. Something's up because on both sides of the road was houses. Mm -hmm. And so we're like, something's up, something's up. If we pull through that road, we're going to get ambushed from one side of the house or the other. 
Um, and one of my buddies who's a mentor, um, Dylan, he's a mentor right now. So if you guys are interested in National Guard, Dylan was National Guard, so he could help you um, navigate that process through the mentor program. So check out Dylan. Um, so Dylan came up with the idea. He's like, hey, man, I think it's a bad idea. Uh-huh. And he's like, if you take that road, I'm, he's like, I'm telling you, they're probably going to fucking ambush us. And we're like, all right, what do we do? And I was like, well, the only other option is we could punch through that field. And Dylan was like. <laughs> and I was like, all right, fuck it. So we had four Humvees and we just started mobbing through that field. And we thought we we're looking at the map. The map makes that field look completely flat. Mm-hmm. So we're like, we're just going to basically do a linear assault onto the objective. Okay. And we had a bunch of guys and only like four Humvees. So we did exactly what they did here where the guys went and took cover behind the Humvees and then we drove up and then that way they had cover. Once we got to the objective, they can get in line and just do a normal assault through, Mm -hmm. through the objective to LOA, limit of advance. And so, but as we got to the field, I was like, all right, let's go. We started taking mortar fire. Mm. And so it was fake mortar fire, but still it was like rounds going off. Like, fuck, we're in range for mortar fire. So we punch it, and then that field ends up having these huge divots. Oh, shit. And so we're like, wham, <laughs> wham, 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 wham. <laughs> and so this training, this is this training scenario. We're just fucking these Humvees <laughs> up, dude. These are the Bravo Corps' Humvees. And then all of a sudden, someone crashes one, and it, like... I don't know if it was mine or someone next to me, but it slams into the ground and just dead. Wow. I was like, well, we just destroyed a Humvee in that fucking training. So we just ditched it, jumped behind the other Humvee and just started doing what they were doing. We're just clearing behind it. And we ended up assaulting the objective and uh, it was the best decision. Dylan's idea was fucking money because they they told us later, like, oh, we were good. Everyone else has been taking the road Mm -hmm. and we were able to... uh, um, assault like um, ambush them mm-hmm. and they've all taken casualties you mm-hmm. guys are the only team that didn't take casualties minus the Humvee minus the Humvee <laughs> that actually costs money yeah we just, <laughs> <laughs> we're the only ones that took a real casualty if you guys wonder what we're drinking I'm drinking a stone hazy IPA I have no idea what's in this we got a mix pack and I opened a can I don't know what it was it's a, it's a hazy it looks just like mine but I will tell you what this is this is Woodford Reserve Double oak. Double oak. Old fashioned. Which is amazing. Is that straight or is that an old fashioned? That's straight. Oh. This is whiskey. Never mind then. <laughs> I'm not a fan of this hazy. I'm not a fan of the hazy either. Ah, it's too, the, the too delici- hazy. The delicious is good. The FML is good. And there's one more that's good, but the, the yeah, hazy is. The hazy is like, it tastes like it's got milk in it or something. It's like, <laughs> And it looks it looks like someone bukkake him. <laughs> like, it's like fucking nasty. Like I, it's like all it looks like, like there's just swimmers in there. Like I'm gonna get fucking pregnant What's from drinking this bitch. Bukkake. <laughs> <laughs> so you could just that's, it looks like somebody came in it. But why did somebody have the bukkake in it? Bro, look how thick that went under the light. It looks like someone ookie cookie my fucking glass, bro. <laughs> Like ten Asian Ookie dudes were like, Ookie cookie. It's so gross looking, dude. It's just I'm a, not a fan of it's hazy. It's just a hazy. I like them thick like that. Ugh. We're talking about bukkake, and you're like, I like it like that. It does. I like it's... when it swims down my throat. I like it when I can't see through it. Pause. Moral question, Abale, would you shoot an unarmed Nazi? Yes, without question. <laughs> Me too. I would empty I the fucking clip into his head. I think it's supposed to take a little more thought than that, like morally, but I have no issue. If you with guys that. sat me down and said you have to shoot him, I would shoot before you finish the sentence and <laughs> just like, empty the fucking gun. Like, hey Abel, you have to I'd be like, listen, bro. No, I nothing against you, but I have to deal with them for the rest of like however long I'm fucking here. I just have to watch you die. Like I've seen people die before. Oh, so you wouldn't shoot him because he's a Nazi. You would shoot him to avoid. Yeah, hazing. I would just shoot him because you guys were like, you have to shoot him. I'd be like, okay, ba 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 ba. Happy? Like we've been killing people all day. Well, this is gonna fucking this is gonna be a problem. 
Like, yeah, they really there. they really make this guy take like a moral stance on it, but it's like. Yeah, his character, I think, throughout the entire movie, his whole character yeah. is the fact that he doesn't want to kill people, and, yeah. he, and he's he's stuck there. He didn't mean to be. In... Which I, I'm not dogging. I think it's amazing contrast to uh-huh. a fresh soldier and uh, someone who's been through it for a while, and, and yeah. how you lose. <clears throat> That's what I love about this movie is it's so realistic in that you know most people would be that guy. They're like, I don't want to kill somebody. Like, this yeah, fucked no up. one does. Nobody. Yeah. Most people don't want to kill somebody, and then versus a season combat veteran to where they're like fucking shoot him right you know and it's like it it i love the contrast they didn't do any middle ground it's Mm -hmm. brand new and way 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 season yeah everyone in that tank is like should not be there and annoyed by your presence that you still have innocence in your life you know what i mean right and then they transition that's another cool part is they transition from being annoyed at your innocence to like loving it Mm -hmm. and then they they start to like man i they start to it's almost like they remember when they had they it. want to defend it so that you don't yes, lose it right because yes. theirs is gone right and they were like oh fuck i remember when i was like, like that. we could still save this guy's life this guy yeah. may still have a normal life like if right. we can which is crazy yeah that whole i think battle. everyone in this fucking tank in all the actors in that tank mm-hmm. should have gotten awards for this movie dude daniel Pena's is amazing He's he either really funny, yeah, or he, but he also transitions Chips. to playing, yeah, exactly. Chips is fucking hilarious. Or Ant Man, yeah. he's like, Ant-Man but I got to keep like... the man. <laughs> <laughs> like he, he's so funny, yeah. or he can transition to playing such a serious character, and it does such a good job at it. It's such yeah. a very. Uh, and what's his name? Um, was it John from Walking Dead? Bernthal. Bernthal. Yeah. Like in this, he was with his teeth. Oh, he played that character. Uh, perfect. The character was perfect. He was disgusting in this. Killing it, Bernthal. He like killed he's, it. He's killing the podcast game now. Yeah, he just came out of nowhere, just like I'm gonna do a podcast, and it nah. was like, Pew. which is good because a lot of people try it. I think Martha Stewart launched a YouTube channel, and she's fucking flip, like failing. <laughs> but yeah, like who wants to listen to? Some it's not old, easy to do. Old white woman talk is like unless you're gonna talk about your time in prison, Martha. No one gives a shit. Or banging Snoop Dogg. I don't want to hear the stories. <laughs> it's like we'll, we'll listen to you rap about Snoop and prison. If you try to talk to me about cooking. <laughs> and taxes. I don't want to hear that shit. But your head can't make no sense of it. And we go in there. And for three whole days, we shoot that wounded horses all day long. Sun up the sun down to shoot mm. horses. Love this scene. And that was some hot summer days. I never smelled it like that time. Pause it. You know how you kill a horse? That's one of my favorite scenes in the movie. <clears throat> it's raw. Dude, it's rough. It's so good. To me, To me, this whole scene is PTSD. Yeah, it's like when they finally break that like sort of thing where they just got to be like on a level all the time, which yeah. they are in the tank and they're on mission. But when they just sit down yep. and then like certain things go wrong, they just all start cracking, you know? like Everyone's cracking in their own way. I think Top is trying to live some normalcy by having them cook him some eggs mm-hmm. by showing them decency by being trying to be a good person this is he's trying to bring normalcy back into his life to overcome all the trauma and then mm-hmm. the, his his boys are just like crushed and de- like right. shy holds on to his religion um john's character just went as disgusting as humanly possible yeah. he tried to give up all all sense of humanity as though any reminder of being human would make him feel like a piece of shit. Yeah. So he went completely the opposite direction. And then you have um, Pena, who's kind of just like in the middle. Yeah. But he's the glue that holds everyone together. And he's trying to be like the voice of emotion. Yeah. Shy is like literally just crying because he's just so emotionally involved in everything that they've done. It's just like the the breakdown is amazing. I feel like he's telling that story because they're, he's trying to make them seem normal for a second. Like, just sit down yeah. and eat like a normal person. Yeah. And then he starts telling that story. He's like, we're not normal, bro. Right. <laughs> he's exactly. like, listen to this. Like, I'm telling this story because things are fucked up. We yeah. cannot sit at a table and have eggs anymore. We right. are past that. Yeah, you're way past that. And then and that's, and that's what I think Brad Pitt did that was so beautiful is he took this young guy who hasn't experienced all those things Mm -hmm. and was like i could pretend for a minute with him because he's not pretending right so we could have this dinner and fake this like cute little life and pretend like these are our wives and we're at back at home right and i could escape it for a sec and then his boys come back and it's like those are the monsters that you created in order to stay alive right and they're like 
fucking just throwing shit off the table, licking the eggs. Like they're like, how dare you? Yeah, <laughs> like, the it's fuck. Like, quit pretending, dude. We are not fucking normal people. Like we've gone way past that. I love this scene. It's powerful. It's so powerful. So like, I don't know. I just love that fucking scene. So much going on that I, I think people may not pick up on. Maybe they do. Maybe because the acting's so good. As always, comment section, comment down below how you guys interpret some of the stuff. You know, it's it's always up into interpretation, especially with movies. So I, I know you guys have a lot of cool stories. We love to read them. So mm-hmm. you know, however you guys interpret this whole scene, I think it's a very powerful scene. But we'd love to hear you guys' take on it. Yeah. So. W- when good acting happens, I want to talk about it because we're reviewing so many of these war movies, guys, and we're talking about tactics, and we're talking about... It's like so many of them are shit. So, <laughs> so many, many of these them. movies are so So many bad. of them are shit. The minute some people put on a military uniform, the acting goes down the drain, the budget goes down the drain, the tactics go down the drain, that every once in a while you get a fucking gem. Mm-hmm. And when you get a gem, you just have to savor it. <laughs> like a good whiskey, you just have to savor it. Because, damn, there's some really bad ones. Battle L.A., Jarhead 2. Battle, oh, you're not going to compare Battle L.A. to Jarhead 2. Those are two completely different types of bad. Battle L.A., I think, is awesome. It's continuous action from beginning to end, whether you like the ideas or not. But Jarhead 2 was like... Steven Seagal trash. It was like a high school project. A yeah. fucking movie was terrible. Uh, Hyena Road. Hyena Road was... Shit. Was like a, a church production. <laughs> it <was like laughs> did seem like a church production. <laughs> it didn't make any sense. I was yeah, like, this I is. The road was so bad. This is like four kids who just bought a camera and decided to make a movie. Yeah, it's so bad. It's so, so bad. There's so many sh- so shitty ass war movies. At some point, after all this reviewing, I feel like we need to give an attempt at least at a war short. At a war short, yeah, that would be yeah. great. Yeah, well, so, obviously you would take that. Now you gotta be careful. That's putting your money where your mouth is. You know what I mean? That's that's basically talking shit about all these advisors mm-hmm. and all these people who are advising and not only advising but making movies and then making one yourself. Good, I will do that. That's a challenge, son. I will do that. Could be humble. I have I have no qualms with what I think is good. I trust, and it's not because I'm cocky or I'm arrogant. We're in business. I have to trust that what I think is good is good. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, the ruck trainer wouldn't exist. Those right. boots wouldn't be coming. That's true. All these things that were just being like $100,000 investments would be ridiculously stupid if we question if what we think is really good. Right. So I, I have faith that we can make a good, at least war short. I would like to be an officer. I'm just saying. <laughs> you would be an officer. <laughs> be like, I, would, I would like to be the punchable face that walks down and says, move out. Move out! <laughs> and then I would stand there with Kurt and be like... And I'd turn around and be like... You okay. just, you just, just, <laughs> just not gonna move. Like a dog that's almost done barking. Move out! <laughs> move out. Plus, this is what I love about this. One of the major reasons I love this movie is because it's so tactically on point. Mm-hmm. Like tactics are fucking brilliant in this movie. Like I don't know if this who's a, this advisor was or who came up with the ideas from this. Maybe it's just uh, a historian that was like, this is what they would have done. And mm-hmm. but they're fucking brilliant. It's like they send him to the high ground to have an Overwatch position. It's just a common basic thing that makes perfect sense. And then he finds this, like, bush to crawl up inside to where someone could literally walk past you and not see you. Mm-hmm. And then what happens? The guys end up, a whole formation of Nazis comes walking up, and he's there to go take off running and alert the guys. If he didn't do that and they didn't set in this Overwatch position, they would have been fucked. That whole formation of Nazis would have been on top of them, and they would have been in a gunfight that they would have lost. Or if he would have sat down in an open area where everybody could see him right. just to sit down and eat instead of hiding. Then exactly. They would have killed him. They would have killed him and then they would have been like, okay, he is uh, in advanced position so or he's an uh, overwatch position so obviously there's a, a major unit somewhere Right. and then they could start fanning out. They could send out their overwatch their, and then they could do a cloverleaf technique until they find him. Hmm. They could get intel on him and then 
come back and then formulate a plan of attack and just completely catch them off guard and probably win the fight. Mm. So it's these, it's these small, small decisions, decisions yeah. along the way that are good tactical decisions that end up saving their lives. And like, that's what tactics is. And I think tactics is best portrayed when it's just about land. And I think that's why movies are so cool when it's like on horseback and it's Vikings. Because we take away the aircraft. We take away all this Gucci bullshit that like they use in uh, Mile 22 mm -hmm. where it's like, I'm watching everything. You have five people in this building. You know, it's like all this overwatch. And it goes back to the basics of tactics. What does the terrain dictate? What is our capabilities? We only could shoot out this far with this weapon system. Our arrows only go this far. Other than that, it's hand-to-hand -hand combat with mm -hmm. swords. So you have to start being a much better tactician to fight. And, you know, it goes back to, um, was it Sun Tzu? Uh, the art of war mm -hmm. it's like true tactics comes from using the land and to your advantage you know and like figuring out how to maneuver around the land right. in order to outwit your opponent that is it's badass and this is a great representation of that because they're not far off from that yeah So again, tactics in this movie are just incredible. Mm -hmm. So they have that whole movement coming at them. They want to do a last stand. One tank left. Everything they got, they're basically going to die in place. Die, yeah. So what do they do? He puts a dead body in an American uniform, lights him on fire on the tank as though he was killed. You know, it's like they set up this whole scene like the germans destroyed their tank and killed them mm -hmm. lights the another body on fire on the floor it's like a perfect setup right, it's like, just fucking tactical genius yeah. so that way they're like oh this is just a blown up tank with some dead americans on it and they'll walk all the way up to you giving you the best shot you can right. at killing as many of them as you can point blank range right so it's just like the this movie is just fucking smart tactical decision after smart tactical decision the entire fucking movie it is fucking crazy i love it and then when they this whole last stand in the tank damn i wish i wish every single one of them would have won an award mm -hmm. like if i was one of these guys in the tank as an actor yeah i would have fucking hung up my my coat <laughs> i don't know like that's a wrap i'm done mic drop walking out yeah. never doing a movie again yeah fucking nailed it i win bye yeah it's so fucking good it's a dude. great movie but sure Final conversation? Yeah. I think that sacrificing yourself for people you care about mm -hmm. is the peak of human existence. Correct. I don't think that there's anything above that. I don't think sex, I don't think drugs, alcohol, um, success, happiness. There, I don't think there's literally anything above sacrificing for people you care about. Mm. And this scene in the tank is the perfect example of that. It's like passing around that bottle of liquor and telling stories and embracing that final moment mm -hmm. of here we go before the end yeah. is it's just the highest you could, you could possibly achieve. And that, that's probably why so many soldiers have, you know, bonds that right. can't be broken is because if you've experienced that in any capacity, you've experienced probably the closest thing that there is to not being human. Speaking of sacrifices, you know that there was, it was an army veteran that uh, whooped the ass of that shooter in Colorado Springs. I did, yeah, he's a Hispanic guy. Yeah. I saw the, I saw the news story. Did you see the guy's face after? No. He was fucked up. Oh no, yeah, I saw it when he got to the jail, or whatever, yeah, he was, was like, all he's black like and all blue and black shit. and blue, yeah, that fat kid. That veteran beat the shit out of him. So, 
We commend you, sir. <laughs> Badass. That was sacrifice. The like, FNG that's, Academy the salutes FNG you. The FNG Academy salutes you. Fucking well done. And that's why, you know, there's, there's this debate about firearms and whether or not people should have firearms. Mm-hmm. And it's just always going to be a debate. But at the end of the day, everyone just wants the shootings to stop. Yeah. It's just we disagree on how to achieve that goal, but we shouldn't be mad at each other for it because we just want the shootings to stop. Right. We want innocent people to stop being killed. And I believe that the answer to that is by arming more citizens who could defend themselves to prevent those attacks. Mm-hmm. But I also accept that other people, in the hopes that those shootings would stop, feel that not having guns would be the answer. So not to start a debate, I'm just saying at the end of the day, the important thing is not whether you believe more guns is the answer or less guns is the answer, is that we all want shootings to fucking stop and innocent people to stop getting killed. Just take all the guns from the entire Uvalde Police Department and just give it to this one guy. And then he will just go around actually using those guns to stop shootings. I think That's that, right. I think that'll work. He didn't even have a gun and he stopped an active sh- He went and took his gun and beat his ass with it. Yeah. That fucking guy's awesome. Team, you're doing the second. Grab that grease gun. Coffee. I'm going to run. Bible, you ready to see that 30? Holy shit. Turned into a hellscape. I love this scene. So to me, like Brad Pitt's just like demonstrating exactly what somebody does that is battle hardened. Mm-hmm. It's not that you want to die. It's not that you've embraced death. It's not even you're okay with dying. You never go into a situation like, ah, I don't care fuck if I die. You just accepted that it's a fact of... It's just part of it, yeah. but you are always fighting to not die. Mm-hmm. If I have, I've been shot at multiple times. I've seen rounds hit. I've had guys hit right next to me. I've plugged bullet wounds, you know, lay down cover fire for them to get them inside. You don't just say, I don't give a shit if I die. No, you, it's options, 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 options. You always have an option in front of you. What is the best option to survive this situation? And that basically what it happens is like, here's life you ha- in, in danger. And here's death, right? It's like, it's a, once it touches, you're dead. Mm-hmm. So all that's happening is your options go in, 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 right. until you don't have any more. And that's when you meet your, your end. But you're always looking for the next best option. Mm-hmm. You're never just saying like, fuck it, I don't give a shit about my life anymore. Right. You're, you're, oh, you're, what's the best thing I could do right now until there's literally one there's no more choices anymore. There's right. one, and then there's none. You know right. what I'm saying? So it's like, it just. I think Brad Pitt demonstrates that perfectly, where he's like, "We're overrun, mm-hmm. but we still have options. We're not here yet. We're still here. We could get outside the tank, lay down some suppressive fire, pull the weapon system from outside, reload it on the inside. I ha- and then his options limit and limit again. And then final scene, it limits to him with his pistol only." He's already got bullet holes. He's dying. Mm-hmm. So now what's his, his options are here now, right. but he still has options. He could shoot himself right. or he could shoot one more. Right. That's an option. And then he shoots one more. Now he's out of options. Now there's only one choice left. There's no longer two. Time to go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's just, it, it, bo- it not that it bothers me, but I feel like people don't understand the mindset of an operator when they're in that situation. Right. It's never like, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to just fucking go because yeah. I don't care. It's always what's the best option in this situation. And then you take it and then it's either good or bad. Mm-hmm. And then from there you have two more and then you got to pick the best one of those two. And it keeps going until you don't have any more and you're dead. Yeah. Or you survive. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But no, I feel you. It's the, it, it, he does it perfect in this. He's just always looking for the next best option. He's a tactician. Mm. What's the next best option? He doesn't have time to worry about fucking death. He's got to find the next best option. Yeah. Be 
Easy, boy. Easy now. One's alive. All right, so the last thing was just kind of bothered me was just like the medic is not going to let someone in shock who just survived uh, watching his team get wiped out leave a tank with his finger on the trigger of a pistol. <laughs> <laughs> he's still holding He's it. still hold Like right here, he's out of the tank, still holding the pistol with his finger on the trigger. Uh -huh. No medic is going to do that. Right. Every medic is going to disarm you. Hey, brother, calm down. I got you. Right. Let me just put this aside over here. We got you. We're going to take care of you. You did amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, get the fucking weapon out of their hand. Right. You don't know what kind of, like, PTSD they're going through, trauma, uh, concussions. You know, like, in his head, he could have delusions that you're the Nazis. Right. Like, you're just... Nitpicking, obviously, not a big deal. <laughs> the <But> one thing. <laughs> it just drives me crazy that his finger's on the trigger, and they're just like, all right, let's just get you out of here. And he's just, like, flagging the fuck out of everybody. They're like, all right, calm down, like, I bitch. might still shoot. <laughs> yeah. Shit's fucked up, man. Like, hey, let's just take his gun away. <laughs> but that's it, guys. All right, so we hope you liked that episode. We love this movie. I don't think there's much better of a war movie in existence than Amazing. Fury. This fucking movie's amazing. But... Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you go check out the FNGacademy.com. Like we said, we got AR670 boots, 670-1 boots um, in the works. Same factory that makes Timberlands. Sorry we couldn't get them made in the U.S. Trust me, we asked, we tried. They said, no, thank you. <laughs> it's just not happening. There, you, there's no company in the U.S. That, that manufactures boots at a high quality that's willing to take on a startup company, a newer company like ourselves. Um, so we had to go overseas. We went to Mexico, the same factory that makes Timberlands. Great factory, great place, uh, super high quality. Uh, zero drop, wide toe box, EVA foam, super cush, perfect for selection. These boots are so sick. We can't wait for you guys to see them. Ruck Trainers 2.0s are about to drop. Um, and we're going to have hundreds of them this time instead of just 50 at a time, 50 for the drops, which sell out in a couple hours. Mm -hmm. We're going to have hundreds of them. So you guys will get set and we'll make sure that you have everything you need. Go check out 18 Alpha Fitness for Kevin so you can get a good workout plan. Make sure you're training up and we'll talk to you guys next time.